What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another Swatcher review for you. So today we're actually talking about three collections from Zoya. So we've got their new trios for Winter Holiday 2022, which is their Y2K trio and their Hypnotic trio. And then we also have their Classic Leathers collection, which I believe is from Fall 2022. So we've got 12 polishes in total to go over today. But before we get into that, if you haven't heard of Zoya before, they are a mainstream salon brand that is 10 free, meaning they are free of 10 of the potentially harmful ingredients that can be found in nail polish. They are vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients. And they're also cruelty free, meaning they do not test their products on animals. So like I said, we've got 12 polishes to go over. These six polishes in the leathers collection are all cream finishes. And then we've got some specialty finishes in the trios. The Y2Ks are this sort of jelly hollow finish. And then we have some shimmers with the hypnotic collection. So I'm gonna show you all the swatches first. First, then we'll get into a little bit more about pricing and availability and my thoughts on the collection. Just a quick note with Zoya swatches, I do actually use their Z wide brush, which is available separately. Zoya's default brush is a round skinny brush. Personally, I don't prefer that. I do like a wide flat brush. I think it makes application a little bit easier and I think it makes the polishes a little bit more self leveling. But if you prefer a round skinny brush, just know that that is what the polish comes with originally. I just think for swatching purposes, it's easier to use the wide flat brush. But anyway, let's get into the swatches. So roll the footage. So as with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using a base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I'm using the Orly Bonder base coat. So we'll start off with the classic leathers collection, our cream finishes. This first shade is called Gidget, and this is what I would describe as a camel color in a cream finish. It's a nice, very yellowy beige color, although I will say on my nails, it looked so orange orangey and I think that's because I have very yellow skin tone so I think I could get away with doing it in two coats but it wasn't as self-leveling as I would have liked so I ended up doing a third just to kind of smooth everything out but I do think that the coverage ended up being the same so I could probably just do two coats and then smooth it all out with some top coat but I'm sure it also depends on the length of your nails but overall it's a really pretty color. Next up we have the shade Anno and this one is described as a berry magenta shade. So it's got a lot of brightness to it, but it's also very rich. I think this is the type of shade that is really in any time of year color, but it definitely leans a little bit on the deeper, richer side, which I think makes it perfect for fall winter. But you can definitely get away with wearing this in the spring and summer as well. And this one I thought was an incredible formula. It was very juicy. It almost had a jelly-like feel to it, but it was very opaque. So I did get full coverage in two coats and it self-leveled really nicely. Next up, we we have the shade Dogma and I will say this one looks very similar to the last shade in the bottle and it is somewhat similar. I would say it's sort of the deeper counterpart to it but this one definitely feels like a deeper rich magenta kind of color and again we had a really nice formula here very easy to work with very smooth and self-leveling and you will see a comparison of the two shades at the end of the swatches so stay tuned for that but yeah another gorgeous color this feels like a very wintry berry kind of shade so I I love it. Moving on, we have the shade Rider, which is a really gorgeous medium brown color. It's got a nice warmth to it, so it definitely leans a little bit on the red side. And this one was actually really opaque. I did get some pretty nice coverage in the first coat, but you could still see a little bit through it. So I ended up doing two for full coverage, but really enjoyed this formula, really enjoyed this color. Zoya does browns really well. I think it's something they excel at. So this is just another favorite to add to the list. And then we have the shade Althea and this one I thought was really beautiful in the bottle. It's this nice hunter green kind of shade and it was actually pretty sheer in the first coat. I wasn't sure if I was going to need three based on that opacity. I ended up doing two and I thought to my naked eye it looked pretty good in two coats but I notice now looking at the swatch it was weirdly streaky so I'm not sure if there was just not enough pigment in my bottle. I did shake it up and this is something that usually happens if you don't shake up your bottle enough. So would probably need a third coat for this. Not as impressed now that I'm seeing it in a close up. And the last polish in the classic leathers is this one Silva. And this is a really beautiful slate blue cream shade. Again, it was actually a little bit sheer in the first coat. I was a little nervous about that, but I ended up getting full coverage in the second coat and I thought it looked really gorgeous on. Another type of polish that I think Zoya does really well is navy blues. And I'm not sure 
I would quite classify this as a navy blue, but it's definitely adjacent, and I think it's really beautiful. I love that slight greenish yellowy undertone to it, and I think it's a beautiful winter color as well. So now let's move on to the hypnotic trio. We've got three really gorgeous deep shimmers. This first one is called Mitora. Sometimes Zoya throws me a curveball with these names. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce them, and Google is not helpful at all, but this shade, oh my gosh, I was not expecting to immediately fall in love with it, but it's such a rich, blackened, berry kind of color, and there's almost this duochrome looking shift. Sometimes it looks pink, sometimes it looks red, sometimes it even has a little bit of a purpley vibe to it, and I cannot get enough of it. I think this is stunning. I bet it would look gorgeous with a matte top coat as well. Next, we have the shade Rosalind, and this one is a really, really deep purple base that has an intense, almost turquoisey blue shimmer running throughout. And I knew looking at this one that I was absolutely going to love it. It was a little bit more sheer on the first coat, but in that second coat, I got such a deep, gorgeous color. And this to me looks like such a cosmic, beautiful, wintry night sky kind of vibe. I love the way that it looks when the light catches it, but I also love that almost blackened tone you get when you're in dim lighting. So another absolute stunner and a really great form formula in this one. And the final shade in the Hypnotic Collection is this one, Clarice, and this one is a super deep blackened green shimmer. And this one actually ended up giving me one coat coverage. Now I do have short nails, so if you have longer nails, you probably need more coats, but honestly, I could get away with wearing this in one coat. And again, it's such a stunning shade. I love the almost duochrome vibes of this one as well. Head on, it looks like an intense green. It almost looks black until the light hits it and then you see the green, but sometimes at extreme angles, you almost see a little bit of red, which is very funky and gorgeous. And last but not least, collection-wise, we've got the Y2K Trio. So we've got three polishes with a sort of jelly-like finish to them, and then they all have a shimmer as well as hollow glitters. This first shade is called Milana, and it is a neon pink jelly base. And then we've got this really gorgeous, cool-toned bluish purple shimmer, as well as silver holographic hex glitters. So here's what it looks like on its own in two coats. It definitely has that sheer jelly-like vibe. And at first I wasn't sure how this fit in as a holiday or winter polish, but once I decided to give it a little bit of a layering experiment, I saw exactly what Zoya was going for. So I did pair this over Mitora and I thought it looked stunning. It really transformed the polish and you could see a lot more of that blue purple kind of shimmer coming through. Definitely very fun to experiment with, and you could also see a lot of that fun holographic pigment in there as well. Next up, we have the shade Tamiya, and this one is a very orchid-toned purple jelly base. It's definitely on the warmer, pinkier side. And then again, we have that really intense blue-purple shimmer, as well as the silver holographic hex glitters. And here's what that one looks like in two coats. Again, really gorgeous. This one I could see as being more of a wintry shade, but also perfect to carry you through to the spring on its own. I think it's really beautiful. I love a combination between a warm base and a cool shimmer. I just think it looks really cool. And again, I wanted to try doing a little combo action. In this case, I paired it over the shade Rosalind from the Hypnotic Collection. And I have to say, I thought it looked exactly the same as the last combination that I just did, probably because they both have that blue purple shimmer and the silver hollow glitters in there, so maybe more experimenting needs to be done with those two to make them look different. <laughs> but the final polish in this trio is this one Sparrow, which is a gorgeous, intense sky blue jelly base. Again, we've got that blue shimmer running throughout, and then we also have these silver hollow hex glitters. And here's what this one looks like in two coats. This is the one I was probably the most excited for, just because this to me feels like it's a perfect wintry, snowy kind of color, but it's also a great summer pool kind of color. So love shades that I can wear in multiple seasons. I know most people don't wear their polish seasonally, but I personally prefer to. I think it's a lot of fun that way, but loved this one. And I was a little nervous to try doing a little combo. I started off by putting it over Clarice, but again, it has that blue shimmer in there and the silver hollow glitters. So I wasn't sure if it was gonna look exactly the same as the others. It ended up actually looking a 
little bit different, I think because of that green color I had underneath, but I wanted to see what it looked like over something a little bit different. So I ended up trying it over the shade Silva from the Leathers collection, and I actually really loved this combination. I think there's something about having a similar base color, but also with just a little bit of a different undertone that makes it look very visually interesting. And I don't know, it was giving me snowfall at night kind of vibes. So I really enjoyed this one. So here are all of the 12 shades that I just reviewed together in one little handy reference chart for you. I will say I really enjoy all of these colors. I don't think that there's any that I didn't like. The green Althea I thought was just a little bit more sheer, but also that was me looking at it through an HD close-up. So I think in person it's a little bit more forgiving and I'm probably going to be wearing that one a lot, but I absolutely loved the two trios. I loved them even more than I expected to, especially the hypnotic trio. I thought those colors were absolutely stunning. They're perfect for winter. They feel like those rich, deep, jeweled tones. And I love that they're almost hidden in that black base. So you have to wait for the light to shine on them to see their true exciting color. So I thought it was a lot of fun. So those are all of the polishes from the three collections. I have to say in terms of the classic leathers, I thought the colors were really pretty and I do see myself wearing these. But to be honest, I was a little disappointed because when I first saw promos of the collection, I thought that they were going to be a leather finish. And I wasn't 100% sure what that would mean, but I thought it was either going to have like that sort of satin matte finish or maybe a little bit of texture going on. And it ended up just being a cream finish, which I thought was a little bit boring because I love when Zoya does something a little funky. That being said, I know not everybody is into weird finishes, so I understand why they want to keep them in the cream section. And thankfully, I was placated with some exciting finishes in the two new trios, which I absolutely loved with those trios. I thought that they were really gorgeous on their own, and I also thought it was really fun to layer the Y2K shades over the hypnotic shades. So I definitely see myself wearing those a lot, especially the Y2K shades. I think those are going to be really great for summer as well because they're really bright and fun. So those I was very excited for. I love when Zoya branches out and does something interesting. And I feel like they have been doing a lot of cream finishes lately, which I don't love. So I'm glad to see the trios, but I'm also just hoping that they do something a little weird again. It just feels like it's been a while since they've done one of those funky collections. But I guess it is a little bit tricky when you are a mainstream brand. The majority of your demographic is probably just looking for basic cream finishes. So I totally understand why they did it, but as a nail polish lover and as a person who's seen some of their weird polishes that they've done, I just wish that they would do those again. But yeah, like I said, I use the Z wide brush for my swatches, but it does default to a round skinny brush. But you can purchase the Z wide brush separately. And a lot of times on the Zoya website, if you buy a collection, it does come with Z wide brushes for free. So the bottles are 15 milliliters each and they retail for $12 on the Zoya website. They're also available from a couple of retailers. They're on Beyond Polish and there they retail for $7.70 USD. And you can use the code Kelly for 10% off your order there. They're also on the retailer HB Beauty Bar and there they retail for $9.50. And I have another discount code. You can use the code Kelly to get 20% off your order there. So I'm gonna link all of the options down in the description. You can check them out if you're interested. But I am curious to hear from you guys. What do you think of their mostly cream finishes that they've been doing lately. Are you more interested in those or do you prefer the more specialty finishes like they had in their trios? And also, which of the polishes today was your favorite? Definitely let me know in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I also have a second YouTube channel, my vlog channel, which is a little bit more of my life outside of nail polish. And I do have a podcast. So if you're interested in that, I'll link it down in the description. And of course, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon, my royal astronomer, Amanda M, as well as my cosmic admirals, Rocketman's daughter, Paula, Ken, and Rosie. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video.
Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Bake Up Little Susie, and Bake Up Little Susie wants to know what is your favorite life hack? I love this question because there is a life hack that I have noticed makes such a huge difference in my life, and it is the most obvious thing, and it's also the simplest thing, but it seriously makes such a huge difference. But I would say listening to people instead of formulating a response in your head, which is something that's really hard to unlearn how to do, because I think just as people, People, we're very eager to share how we feel in a conversation. And I feel like when people feel heard, it really makes such a huge difference. And as a person who doesn't get heard very often in conversations, I feel like it makes a huge difference for me. So I always try really hard to do that. But if you have a good life hack, please feel free to do it. Oh yeah, I actually have a kind of evil life hack as well. This is such a departure from being nice, but if you are dealing with like your internet or some sort of service, service that's the price is going up a little bit what you can do is call them and say that you're going to cancel not in a mean way you say it in a nice way oh i'm just canceling it, it's getting a little too expensive i, I don't want to do that anymore then they send you to like these loss prevention maybe where they send you to somebody else in the company and they're like oh we'll give you six months at a discounted rate if you stay on and then you're like okay <laughs> that's my trick but yeah that's it i'll see you all in the next video bye